Hey guys, go ahead and pick up the fourth course on that party. Two bravas, two steak, two chicken, two paella, all going together-ish. Bravas. If nothing else, I just, I want to make people happy. That is the reason I started cooking. That's why I love being a chef. It sounds easy, but there's so many moving parts. There's so many things that, you know, go into the production of a restaurant. And, and to, to be able to, to try to give that experience, you know, night in and night out, it's, it's difficult. But, you know, that's, that's ultimately, I think, you know, it, it, it's made me, you know, try that much harder. I was born in Colombia, South America. My family immigrated to New York when I was four, going on five, and grew up in Queens, New York. I became interested in food working in restaurants, and I started working in restaurants not, not because I was interested in food, but as just a way to pay the bills, honestly. I started out bartending and serving tables, so I was a front of the house guy. Uh, ashamed to say that now <laughs> at this point. I found myself just kind of checking out what the guys in the kitchen were doing. They just always seemed to be having more fun. That's what really drew me to the kitchen. So the very first restaurant I cooked in was a little Cajun restaurant called Bourbon Street in, in Queens. The chef was this really eccentric Italian-American guy, uh, Joey Campanello. He used to keep buckets of ice water on the side of the line, and he said, if you're gonna if you feel like you're going to pass out, he said, roll up your sleeves and dip your arms in the ice water, and that'll keep you from passing out. And, and it worked. And that was kind of my, you know, inauguration into what it was like to be a line cook, and I loved it. I went to culinary school. Soon after I graduated, I got an internship with John George Von Richten at his namesake restaurant, John George. I made it a point to try to work in the best restaurants I possibly could from that point on, and I did. My wife and I both lived in, in New York pretty much our whole lives and never really gave it much thought until, uh, you know, leaving anyway, until our son was born. Go forward about six months and we're realizing that, you know, between taking the baby to daycare and my 75 hour work week and her working opposite schedule, we just, never had any time for one another and never had time to, to spend with the baby. So, you know, we, we started thinking like, you know, I bet there's people who, you know, live in places that aren't quite as stressful and, you know, don't work quite as much. A recruiter called me up one day and got a hold of my resume and said, uh, said, hey, I got this job. It would be the executive chef of a hotel. Soon enough, he said, well, it's in Cincinnati, Ohio. And I pretty much said, no, Thanks, but no thanks. You know, I just didn't know anything about Cincinnati. He persisted. He called me a few more times and uh, eventually got me to come out and do a tasting. It was for the Cincinnati Hotel. So I came out, spent a weekend, and still thinking, you know, I don't know if I could move here. I don't really know anybody. It's a nice city and nice enough. You know, I, well, you know, eventually, you know, I took the job. At the time, we thought maybe we'd spend a few years here and eventually think, you know, what's next? Where, where do we go? But, you know, more and more we started to realize that things in Cincinnati were progressing and there was, there was a great deal of potential here. And, and we just started to fall in love with Cincinnati. And our son, you know, was now, you know, becoming a Cincinnatian and we were like, okay, so why not just stick it out here? And that's when we started, you know, putting together a plan to, to build a restaurant. So all day I'm looking for two paellas, both any time. Two octo, two bravas, one mackerel, two three-piece empanadas, one pozole, one cheese plate, one serrano. Yeah. And you have the octo going with an empanada and a shrimp ceviche, and you have the, the party course. That's two bravas, two beef, two chicken, two paella. I'd opened many restaurants for other people and I knew the struggles that come with opening restaurants and how easy it is to fail. It was, it was super risky and, and, you know, quite honestly, a little bit crazy, but my friend Dan Wright had, you know, just opened Senate not too long before. He was one of the people that convinced me. He's like, you should stick around. You should give this a go. He's like, I think, I think you'll be successful. And we just, we 
cashed in all our chips and said, let's go ahead and do it. Salazar was really, <laughs> it was, it's weird because I, I didn't even know what to call it when we were opening it. Today, I mean, I, I think of it as just a culmination of all the different ideas that, you know, we, we work really uh, collaboratively there. So everybody sort of kind of puts their own input into what they think is, is going to be good. And that's really ultimately what that restaurant is. It's just, what do we think is tasty? Whether it has, a, you know, skews towards Korea or Italy or whatever. I mean, it, to us, it, that doesn't really matter. It's really just, what can we make that's delicious? And simultaneously working with the farmers. Amitas was very much, you know, conceptualized as a Spanish Latin American restaurant. But, you know, as you can see with Salazar, I have a hard time kind of settling on, you know, one idea. So I thought if I did just Spanish, I'd be pigeonholing myself into a very sort of limited pantry. So then I said, well, why don't we just do Latin America as well? You know, and that then all of a sudden opens up the doors to playing with Japanese flavors, which you see in Peru, and some North African flavors, and uh, some Caribbean stuff. And we still use lots of farm fresh product and really you know, take a focus on the ingredients. There's a lot of people who um, are like-minded in this city in that sense, and it's great to see, and, and you don't see all the, the chains here. And I think that's because the dining public as well is just as engaged in making sure that they're getting this local, sustainable, you know, ethically raised product. I have, you know, over the course of my career, really, I think, taken to heart just how important it is to, to really be hospitable and to, to show people um, a good time and, and almost like you're inviting them into your home. Maybe it's made me a little bit more compassionate, you know, maybe more understanding of the fact that that it's it's about you know nurturing and I'm just you know I'm truly grateful to you know be in a city that that is growing and that is excited as a whole I think Cincinnati is super super excited about you know going out and branching out and trying new things and you know having fun and and being relaxed and you know, I think one of the great things is that Cincinnati doesn't take itself too seriously either, you know? And that's, that's the beauty of being in a smaller city like this. I'm, I'm just, I'm really happy to be here.